Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Demina is my name and I'm excited to welcome every one of you today. We're going to have a powerful time as we look into the mirror of God's word for a true reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Invite a friend, a loved one today. We're going to have a blast in this place as we fellowship in the light of his word. Let's pray. Father, we pray for viewers around the world that this light will shine in the dark places of their minds and hearts. Veils fall off, your people equipped and built up, Jesus glorified, and the body of Christ edified. We thank you for answer prayer right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, today we're looking at the ministry of laying on of hands. From our brief study on the subject of tongues, we have been able to see the following. Number one. Tongues is for all believers, all. Mark 16, 17, And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Hence, no believer in the scripture ever got excluded from speaking in tongues. Look at Acts 2, 4. And they were all, all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Everyone spoke in tongues. Every believer spoke in tongues. In Acts 8, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was falling upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. There was no selection. They are laid hands on those who believe the gospel to receive. Acts 10, 44 to 46 and Acts 19, 6. Let me read it because I really want you to see it. While Peter yet spake those words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. It fell on those who heard the word. Wow. And they of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. Now, another scripture here is um, Acts 19.6. It says in Acts chapter 19, verse 6, And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they speak with tongues and prophesied. All of them spoke in tongues. Acts 8.14-17. to 17. See another account. Now, when the apostles which had Jerusalem had that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet has fallen upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And Simon Peter saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered money. He wanted to buy the Holy Ghost. Observe that in Acts 8, 14 to 17, hands were laid on believers by the apostles to minister the things of the Spirit to them, including tongues. Notice that this was not restricted to the apostles only, as evidenced by Ananias in Acts chapter 9, verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou camest, have sent me that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And Ananias, who was a disciple, he wasn't an apostle, but a disciple, a student of the world, laid hands on Paul for him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. A non-apostle in Acts 9.10, student of the word, saw visions and ministered the things of the Spirit. Say that. So Paul's letters to Timothy emphasized this also in 1 Timothy 4.2 and 2 Timothy 1.6. The word presbytery implies elders, those who teach and preach in church. So Timothy had laid hands on him by the elders of the church to minister the gifts of God to them. Laying on of hands can either be done individually or in mass. Hands laid are hands laid. However, when you do it, must believe that it is done. Praise God. Get someone filled with the Holy Spirit today by laying on of hands. Some of the people have been preaching to call them around and just lay hands on them and pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're doing for this week. We'll get a number of people baptized with the Holy Spirit. Bring them to the knowledge of the truth and let them make the choice. Praise God. It's a blessing. Let's pray together. Father, we pray for viewers around the world today. We come our revelation knowledge to dawn on their inside. Barriers are broken. Obstacles are broken. And we decree that the light shines in the dark places of their minds. 
and we declare the blessing of every viewer today. Everyone here sanctified, justified, and perfected. Satan will serve you in notice. You cannot hoodwink anyone here in the sound of my voice today. And Father, we praise you for answered prayer. And we thank you for your word is growing mightily in our inside until nothing else matters. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hey guys, you want to order for this devotional book. It will do a lot of good for you in your lifetime. Get a copy for yourself. We have them in two locations. You can order physically from our office. The announcer will tell you how to do that. And you can order from Amazon. Amazon, Dr. Abel Damina. I'm excited, friends. On Amazon, there are other books you can order. But hey, it's wonderful. It's crazy here. We're in the midst of 30 days of glory, actually at the end of it. So, so much is going on, but I'm glad that we're able to bring you the word of his grace. And you want to join following the services even as we wrap up. But we love you guys, and we decree that the grace of God abounds upon you today. In the name of Jesus. All right, expecting to hear from you today. And until we come again, we tomorrow, same time, same platform. This is Abel Damina saying that the kingdom of God is in power. somebody say I found the Lord he doesn't know what he's talking about when somebody say I gave my life to Christ which life when somebody say I surrendered all to Jesus which, what did you surrender these guys haven't done anything is there unrighteousness with God no no so what was Paul teaching here? He was teaching salvation, but in salvation, God's purpose of election. Give me verse 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. All right, next verse, 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It's not about Isaac. It's not about Esau. It's not about Jacob. It's of God that showeth mercy. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So when he say, I love Jacob, I hate Esau. The loving of Jacob was not based on performance. It was mercy. Who is Jacob? The father of Israel. Why? He was using Jacob and Israel as a pattern to teach election. To show you that, that that application was not a permanent application. It was just a pattern. When Jesus came, he collapsed it. No more Jew, no more Gentile. Because in the first place, it was not because of what Israel did that made them privileged. They were just set as a pattern to establish the purpose of election. I'm teaching here. Yeah. It's not based on anything anybody has done. It's for the purpose of election. <laughs> glory to God. I say glory to God. All right, so read for me 18. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? 20. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Now watch 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So what he's simply saying is that in order for us to understand God's plan, we look at Christ. It's not about he that will it or he that run it. The pot cannot question the potter. <laughs> is it a potter? It's a long time I spoke that kind of English. 
That's the purpose of election. Establishing the fact that all of God's plan must be seen in Christ. Works don't suffice. No works. Nothing to brag about. Not to say I was smart. That's why I'm born again. It must be seen in Christ. Look at verse 22 and 23. Read on. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. So now he was relating this event to show the purpose of God. Why did God choose Jacob? Why did God choose Abraham? Why did God choose Sarah in the story we just read? That the purpose of election will stand. So election is God's choice. Election is God's choice. The word election means choice. Election is God's choice. Now, God is setting a pattern in the salvation of humanity so that humanity will be saved devoid of works so that humanity will be saved devoid of works in the pattern these children are not born god has already made a choice in isaac shall your seed jacob i love esau i hate they are not born they have not done anything why to reveal the purpose of god's choice are we here so the choice of god therefore must be seen not in one man or the other man but in christ it's not about your fasting and prayer it's not about the fact that you were born in a christian home it has nothing to do with what you can contribute this must be seen the salvation of humanity devoid of works he chose the younger meaning you don't need qualification of age that's why he went for the younger to knock out age so nobody will say the reason why i'm born again is because i have been in the church for 55 years no age has nothing to do with it a baby can come into the message and understand the message and be saved right now the elder brother of the prodigal son has no contribution no age that's why god chose the younger and not the older to show that in the purpose of his plan age is not a barrier are we understanding yeah the purpose of election thank you jesus i say thank you jesus you know from from the point of genesis god began to set a pattern for the salvation of humanity from genesis from genesis the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent god began to set a pattern look at verse 25 and 26 of the same scripture and see what he says as he saith also in oc i will call them my people which were not my people oh see there is hosea the book of hosea okay read on and her beloved which was not beloved and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them ye are not my people there shall they be called the children of the living god meaning nobody can decide who can be saved in the same place where they say these are not the people of god is the same place where they will say they are the people of god because this thing has nothing to do with human contribution it is based on election are we here now when people don't understand what you're hearing me painstakingly communicating this evening that is when they now say there are some people god have decided that will be saved and there are some people that will not be saved and god knows that it's because they have not understood that election is devoid of works devoid of age these people were not born these people have not done good or bad god already has made up his mind he has made up his mind that is why we cannot teach election predestination and foreknowledge outside christ it has to be in christ 
The election of God is in Christ. The predestination of God is in Christ. The foreknowledge of God is in Christ. Based on his foreknowledge, in Christ, he predestinated. In Christ. And based on his predestination, in Christ, he chose you. He said, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. He said, nobody can come to me except I call him. The call of God for you is in Christ. Zapatanaka. The election of God for your life is where? So outside Christ, outside Christ, no election, no predestination, and no foreknowledge. So to now begin to pray, God, change my destiny is a prayer in illiteracy. You cannot ask God to change his plan for you in Christ. Your destiny is in Christ and it has been predetermined. It is called predestination. That is a destiny based on foreknowledge that has been already determined. You can't pray and change it. I'm teaching here. Yeah. So based on that foreknowledge, he predestinated and then he 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 made his choice. But the three of them are concepts of grace. Why are they concepts of grace? Devoid of works, devoid of age. That's why anybody can be saved. That's why salvation is not in a church. Salvation is not in a thing. Salvation is in Christ. And in Christ, everybody can be saved. Whosoever believes in him. Whosoever. Teaching good? If you understand, you shout a powerful amen. Read for me verse 27 to 32. Let's do it. Esaias also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Next verse. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Next verse. And as Esaias said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. Next verse. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. How shall we explain that the Gentiles that are not even interested in righteousness, they are not even following righteousness, have attained righteousness, which the Jews that are after righteousness cannot attain? Kibatananga. What shall we say? The Jews who have understood the, the Torah, the Pharisees who memorize the Torah, they keep the Ten Commandments. It has been enshrined in them from childhood. The Gentiles are lawless. The Gentiles are godless. The Gentiles are not seeking for God. Yet, in the face of the Jews who with all their efforts cannot attain righteousness, the Gentiles came from nowhere as lawless as they are and they attain righteousness why that the purpose of election may stand i'm teaching this night now read for me hey next verse but israel which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness all right give me 32 wherefore because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling. Since they decided they will attain righteousness without Jesus. They were stumbling. They were stumbling. They kept stumbling at the stumbling block. But the Gentile just walked in and said, I know I am not good for anything, but what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Saved by grace. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. Shout, I hear, I hear. Kabo Dagaba, leave that in. Simon Nagaga. No wonder Jesus didn't spare them. 
The guy said, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said, you know the Ten Commandments. He said, don't insult me. I have kept it from my youth. He said, you lack one thing. At the best of the Jewish and Israelites righteousness. At their best in morality. At their best in everything. Yet, they were stumbling. They were stumbling. They were stumbling. Look at the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. They brought her to Jesus. Where is the man? A woman does not commit adultery alone. No. Especially if they caught her in the very act. If she, have you ever seen one person committing adultery? Somebody is in a room alone and they say commit adultery? No, there must be a man and a woman. And they caught them in the act. How did the man escape? Selective justice. Selective morality. Jesus said to them, any of you that is without sin, that the purpose of election might stand. Any of you that is without sin. He didn't say any of you that has not committed adultery. If he had said that, they would have stoned that woman to death. But he went back to their law and used the law to defeat them because the law was a stumbling block. What did he use in the law? Remember in the law, if you break one, you break all. So both the woman that commit adultery and the man that told a lie and the other man that stole another person's business, all of them are the same. But they now think because they have not committed adultery and nobody knows about their other lives that they have covered in hypocrisy. They can condemn this woman. But remember, nobody has the right to condemn a sinner as long as he's sinful. You can only condemn a sinner when you yourself are sinless. Jesus looked at them and said, Gentlemen, whoever among you is without sin, cast the first stone. Stumbling block. He took the same stumbling block that they have been stumbling on all their life. He put it for them and they stumbled on it. Didn't they? They stumbled now. All of them one by one dropped their stone and started disappearing. And Jesus to help them. I love Jesus. He's a good guy. To help them, he put his head down. He wasn't looking at them to make their disappearance difficult. He put his head down so that they can disappear fast. When they have disappeared, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Glory to God. Wave your hand, shout, I love Jesus. When they have disappeared, he lifted his eyes. He said, woman, where are they? As if he didn't know where they have gone just to help matters he does not look for how to disgrace he looks for how to cover oh the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men and of his fullness have we all received those of you that receive grace for grace let your amen be taller than your neighbor he looked at her and said neither do i condemn you even though I'm sinless, but I don't condemn. Go and sin no more. He empowered her. Close the chapter. Those men will never talk about that woman forever. Because the day they try, they are not sure if Jesus will spare them. Because before Jesus, they have admitted that they are guilty. I hope you know that. Before Jesus, they have admitted that all of them are guilty. So they are as guilty as a woman. But in fact, the woman is more righteous than them because her own sins have been forgiven. Because it's not about who I love and who I hate. It's about the purpose of election. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. 
This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer.